Happy Thursday, everyone. How are you? I'm very excited to be joined by our guest, life and relationship coach and author, Brian Reeves, today on Ask the Experts. Before we welcome Brian into the chat, I wanted to let you know that we just announced our 11th speaker at our In Bloom Summit in Vancouver, April 12th, 13th, 14th. Sophie Gregoire Trudeau is going to be joining us on Saturday, the 13th of April, as one of our speakers who's going to talk about her new book, Closer Together, over a fireside chat. So I don't know if you have already purchased your ticket to the summit, either in person in Vancouver with us or virtually. I really, truly hope that you'll join us for three days of learning and growth. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Brian to join and we're gonna have your questions answered. Brian, if you don't mind requesting to join, and we're gonna go through for the next 30 minutes answering your love and relationship questions. I read Brian's book this week. It's called Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her, a guide for your journey through the transformational fires of love and intimacy. And it is fantastic. Brian Reeves, thank you for being with us today. Hi, Robin. Nice to see you again. You too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read your bio so that people um, know more about you. Okay. So you are a former U.S. Air Force captain. You're now an internationally renowned author of this incredible book that I learned mm -hmm. so much from. It was excellent, Brian. Thank you. You work as a life and relationship coach with a current focus on supporting men to have better lives and relationships and women. You work with a lot of women and men and couples. And you are the co-founder of Elevate Your Relationship, mm -hmm. a live coaching program for men ready to elevate their relationship game, which has served men over 10 countries wide. You are the host of the podcast, Men This Way. What an excellent podcast. Love your podcast, Thank you. Brian. Thank you. Thank you. And you have a viral blog that it's been read over by over 30 million people in every country on the planet, except North Korea. As far as I know. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going to get going. I'm watching the chat. This is your opportunity to ask Brian, who's an excellent life relationship coach, your relationship questions. He's so wise and insightful. And here we go. Are we ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm born ready. All right. So. How can men find adequate support for their emotional well-being and challenges in a society that often discourages vul vulnerability? Mm -hmm. I think this is a really, I mean, it's a good question. Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, the, 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 one of the core precepts of manhood that we are taught is that to be a man means to be invulnerable and to, to see vulnerability only as weakness. And, um, Obviously, that gets us into a lot of trouble, especially in our intimate relationships. And so, you know, I'll tell you, one of the most important practices, Robin, that I've taken on in the last, how old am I, 49, probably the last nine years or so, is, um, you know, I did a lot of workshops in my, especially in my 30s, a lot of workshops surrounded by women for the most part, you know, transformational workshops, not like Tony Robbins. That's a lot of dudes go to Tony Robbins, but I mean, I don't know, more, more relationship oriented workshops, teachers like uh, Michaela Boehm, uh, even David Data, um, uh, Alison Armstrong, like teachers that are really teaching more relationship stuff. And that was all helpful to start helping me feel things and feel safe uh, to, to have emotions and be vulnerable. And that was, a, that was a healthy step, a good step. But I'll tell you, being in men's groups, Robin, as a man, yeah. reg, re, being in intentional men's groups, mm -hmm. regularly being in conversation with, with what I like to call trustable men. Yeah. By, and, and by trustable men, I mean men that aren't going to judge me, try to fix me, uh, judge my feelings, judge my experience. Uh, try to tell me how I should be, et cetera, but men who are able to just witness what I'm experiencing, 
who can certainly challenge me, but not disrespectfully, not in a competitive way, like a lot of men that's, we, 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 we get stuck in our, our competitive nature, trying to outstatus each other and which just leads to more distrust. You know, I, I, in my Elevate Your Relationship program, it's basically like a men's group for, for men that want to improve their intimate relationships. I mean, there's so much content that we, we discuss and skills and practices, but I think one of the greatest gifts of that of that experience is men just get to talk to other men. They get to be seen by other men for the challenges that, that we're all carrying for the, the wounds, the heartaches, the, the sadnesses, the heartbreaks. That is so healing for men to be witnessed by other men. Yeah. Yeah. That is profound, but that's hard to find for a lot of guys. But that, that's what comes up for me uh, with that question. I think, I I think that's, that's such an awesome answer and, and a, a place where you can go for just huge learning and expansion and support. I'll tell you, my, my relationship with my wife, I think, is deeply served by my, by my uh, being in committed to being regularly in contact in groups with, with trustable men. My my relationship require from with my wife it demands it. It needs it. Otherwise, I'm putting way too much burden on her to be some emotional support, to be to be my all, my everything, or I'm just shutting down because I got nowhere to go with the stuff I'm carrying. I'm just shut down and clenching around my emotions, my experience, my all the stuff, which that doesn't work for her either. That's an excellent, so, an excellent point you made, Brian. Before we go to the next question, yeah. I'm part of. Oh, I have different women's groups, my friends' mm -hmm. groups, but in particular, one women's group. We meet every two weeks. We're accountable to the date and time that we always meet, and we support each other. We're there for that particular reason. And I, um, I'm hearing from what you're saying is the men's group that you're in. It's it's for that purpose. I mean, you're 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 you are there to support each other. So absolutely, I, I love. I really love that suggestion. Thank you. How can I get my husband to open up more? about how he's feeling? Well, you know, whenever I hear that question, how do I get my husband, spouse to? Mm. The first thing that comes up for me is, well, you can't really get him to do anything that he doesn't genuinely want to do. And if you can get him to do it, he's probably not going to respect himself and eventually you won't respect him either. So that language, how do I get him? Okay, so do how do XYZ. I, would you say, okay, she was asking this question in the correct way. How would I encourage? Well, what, what, I, what I hear <laughs> inside of that is, is I'm lonely. I feel disconnected from my partner. How do I connect with my partner? How do I help my partner maybe be more expressive? How do I help my partner come out of, a, of, a, of an experience that doesn't feel good to me? Right, so I'm, I'm hearing a lot of subtext inside of that that's far more, I think, useful and helpful to explore, right? Because now, now it's also, um, it's no longer about what he needs to do, but it's about what am I experiencing? What is a need that I'm having? And how can I communicate that need to my husband in a way that will be connecting for us and not just create more conflict? Because that's usually what happens, yes. right? I, I, I completely hear that. So Brian, yeah. she's feeling like she really wants him to open up. Yeah. So let's let's have some language around this. That would be helpful. I'm I'm yeah. feeling really disconnected from you, honey. Yeah. I can we sit down and have um, a heart to heart tonight at five o'clock after? <laughs> can I, and I? I would love like a little bit of a, a cue, a prompt, a script. Yeah. So I I do think it's important to lead with that vulnerability. I'm I'm I I really want to connect with you. I'm feeling a little disconnected. I'm feeling disconnected. I'm feeling a little lonely. It's not your fault. Right, that's key. It's not your fault. You're not doing this to me. Mm -hmm. That's really key. When, when, as soon as you know, we're just speaking in a heterosexual context here. As soon as, 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 as you know, for most men, as soon as they hear that that slight blamey vibe, like you're doing this to me. If you, if you would just do X Y Z, then I'll feel better. That just tends to drive us more into shutdown. Yeah. Right. It feels it's it feels disempowering. I make this distinction between feedback and criticism. Feedback is a vulnerable sharing of my experience, my feelings, my emotions, maybe even what stories I'm making up, but it's, it's, it's about me. 
I'm offering you feedback. This is what happens in your presence or when you do this, this is what happens for me. That's feedback. Criticism is direction given that is not being asked for. Yeah. Direction given that's not being asked for. So for example, you need to open up. Why don't you open up? That's direction given that is not being asked for and it's just not gonna be helpful. But I'm feeling, I'm feeling lonely, I'm feeling disconnected. I, I really wanna hear more about your inner world. I wanna know what's happening for you. I want to, that's a start. That's a start, right? And I know a lot of men are really shut down. They don't wanna talk about their inner world. There's a lot of unexplored territory that's actually quite terrifying for men to begin to explore. It's never been safe for us, for many of us to explore what am I feeling? You know, I had a rough day at work and I'm pissed at my boss. We can go to anger pretty quick, but to say, I feel really sad. I'm doing this work that doesn't really speak to my soul and, and I'm, I'm, I'm depressed about that. What man's gonna say that? Very few, certainly of my generation and older, maybe younger men, I don't know. I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they are gaining some more emotional literacy. I, I definitely think men of my age are learning more. But again, I think it's important two things to make it safe. If you really want to help your partner come out of, of a world that he's been closed down around for so long, don't criticize him first, don't give him direction that he's not asking for. Give your feedback, share vulnerably what's going on for you, make your request. I really wanna hear more. I, I, I just wanna feel close to you, I wanna feel connected to you, I wanna know what's happening in your world. And then, again, it de depends on where he takes that. Some men will be like, okay, cool, well, this is X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Then just say thanks. That makes me feel good. Give him feedback again. I love it when you share something with me. That actually, I, I, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. So give him positive feedback also. And of course, you know, some men are going to be like, that's ah, stupid. Why would I do that? Well, again, feedback, feedback. You know, it's, it's um, you know, well, to, to me, it, it's, it's not stupid. To me, it's important. Your world matters to me. And it hurts me. It hurts me when, when you don't want to share. But then at some point, you also got to, be willing to walk away and not keep pushing, keep pushing, keep trying to get that, that whole get him to. And look, because again, I, I, I'm really sensitive to the reality that women have been doing so much of the heavy lifting of relationships for a long time. And, you know, when I talk about these kinds of things, I think, I know some, some women, and, and I, I don't know, Robin, if this happens for you, but I imagine there's some listeners, because I get those comments sometimes on some of my posts. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, say, I'm tired of doing all the heavy lifting. It's his turn to do the heavy lifting. It's a me it's men's turn to do the work. That I'm tired of seeing him, of trying to help him, of the blah blah. And you're not wrong. You're not wrong in that. You're not wrong. It is we men do need to step up and do the, our own heavy lifting to 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 bridge the divides of relationship to learn how to connect to learn how to be emotionally present we do 100 percent. but if you're starting from a place where he shut down and i want to help bring him out well feedback not criticism uh positive reinforcement when he does share something making it making it safe for him even to say no you know I'm, i don't feel i don't feel comfortable doing that okay I love you. Please know it hurts me that you don't, but okay. And eventually, I don't know. I say be willing to leave a relationship. If, you're, if your genuine needs are not being met, if your needs for closeness and intimacy are, are being denied, dismissed, not tended to, mm -hmm. uh, yep. because so many men won't change until they realize they have no yep. choice. Yep. Fantastic. That's a long answer. No, it was, a, it was an excellent answer with a lot, of, a lot of skills and tools. I also really like that one around it's not your fault. Like, let this, yeah. right? Unless you're in a really bad predicament here. <laughs> We're on there, maybe there is some stuff going on there. But I mean, I also like sure. that verbiage, that language. Yeah. How can I balance the desire to provide emotional support for my partner with my own need for independence and self care in yeah. a relationship? Uh, I love that. I, it, I, it's I, a, I love that too. It, it's, um, I think this is the core tension in, in all relationships. You know, there's this um, in the movies. Uh, I I I, I love I love I love looking at movies and pop culture as sort of mirrors to to how we do 
life. And, and I see this in uh, the Mission Impossible movies. There's this, so, so Tom Cruise, his character, every Mission Impossible movie, the world is at threat. He has to save the world. He's on a mission to save, literally, Robin. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's not uncommon that bil billions of people will die in the plots of those movies. And at some, somewhere in the franchise, he, he marries a woman. He gets a wife. But we, we, it soon plays out that he actually can't stay married. He can't have a wife. He has to make a choice. Either I be married and three billion people die. Or I save three billion people, but I can't be married. Mm -hmm. Mission versus relationship, like that. This tension between how do I, you know, live my ultimate purpose, my individual. This is what I put on the planet to do, or I'm married, mm -hmm. and I have to tend to someone else. It's a false choice. Right. It's just a false choice. It's not. It's it's framed in. A, in an, an extremely unhelpful way. And so again, the, the, the question that, that's being asked here is, is a very general question. Um, it, it would be interesting to hear more specifically how that shows up for that person, how that tension of being my individual self and tending to relationship shows up. Um, hmm. But I, I think that's a great question to live inside of. I think, I think, I think where we go, where we, where we come off the rails in relationship is we, we decide it's this way or that way. I'm either just going to be my full on individual self and screw, you know, hope the relationship works out, or I'm going to only tend to the relationship and lose myself in the process. It's a false choice. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's, we, we each you must can find have, our you own can have way. It all. You can, you can do all those things. And hopefully if you've got a healthy relationship, no, you know, I, what am I saying? It's not about that, like, I, that word, but I mean, it's more just around, you can have you can be um an emotional support for your partner and for each other you can have you know your time for your self-care and your independence i was talking with a man just about this uh, just yesterday in fact about he was struggling to understand how does he how does he be at work and reassure his 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 girlfriend in this case that that he's thinking of her <laughs> like it's that simple how do i tend to her while i'm also at work doing my thing like this was a real quandary for him. He couldn't figure out. He didn't know how to do both. He was you know, pulled in both directions, uh, fully available to neither because of that tension. Hmm. And again, every couple's got to find their own way, but it could be as simple as just, honey, you know, a little text message to say, baby, I cannot wait to see you. You're so cute and sexy. I hope you're having a great day. I love you. Uh, I'm going to focus on my work now, so I'll be off. I'm going to be out, 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 out offline for the next three hours. If you have an emergency, I'm here. But otherwise, I'm, 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 I'm doing my thing. Yep. Done. It's a great communication. She feels, she knows he's there and carry on. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that, and that's, that's true for self-care. That's true for self-care as well. You know, being, you can say the same thing in, 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 I need some time by myself. I love you. I love you. I can't wait to see you again on the other side, but I, I need a couple hours or I need to go away to my cabin for three days or just, I, I just need to be in my own space. Nothing to do with you. You're fantastic. Can't wait to see you on the other side, but this is what I need from you right now. Thank you. I love you. Yeah. Is it shady that my boyfriend likes suggestive pictures of girls he knows on Instagram? Uh, ask that question again. I was reading this is very it, strange last comment about lollipops. I know. I don't know what that <laughs> is. Is, <laughs> it, is it shady that my boyfriend likes suggestive pictures of girls he uh, knows on Instagram? Great question. Um, is it shady? You know, I, I, I tend to refrain from making judgments like that, whether the behavior is shady what what i prefer instead to, to to look at is well what is the impact of the behavior yes what is what is the impact of it and because there are genuinely some women who are okay with their partner they get turned on by their partner looking at other women being turned on by other and vice versa i mean some men so i i don't think we can put things in in broad categories like that but what i'm hearing inside of that is that it's it's having a negative impact on on the, on the woman who wrote that, I'm assuming woman who, who wrote that, who asked that question. 
that his liking other girls' photos is causing a certain experience in her that that doesn't feel good and probably feels disconnecting. It probably feels maybe even like a little mini betrayal. The way the way I describe this to men, because this comes up in men's conversations a lot as well, is <clears throat> and I like to use the this this masculine frame of of uh, masculine feminine frame of of witness and and witnessed what is what is what sees and what is seen like in in this frame like the masculine is what sees it looks out it sees consciousness and I'm I'm pulling from David Data's work here and I want to be really careful I'm not suggesting men should be masculine and women should be feminine not at all just the, this this play of 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 uh, primal uh, dualities. So anyway, the, the masculine sees and the feminine is what is seen, just is witnessed, right? That's, it's, it's interesting. You, you, like, you go to um, weddings. Most men are wearing the same shit. They're wearing the same outfit, black tuxedo or, you know, it's the same. But you go to a wedding and, and uh, the bridesmaids are all made to look the same because they don't want to uh, compete, compete, compete with yeah. the bride. Right, but the the groom and the brides and the and the groomsmen they're all wearing the same outfit, and you know most men also not a lot of variety, but 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 and again I I I don't mean to to necessarily draw these you know men are like this women like that I, I that's not at all what I'm what I'm trying to do here but just just showing these and this we are getting back to the liking girls pictures on Instagram by the way <laughs> <laughs> I haven't lost that thread, um, but what's happening is I'm as a man. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm witnessing some other woman with my like, I'm witnessing. And the, and the woman who is my partner, who is wanting to be witnessed by me is experiencing me witnessing this other woman. Like she's seeing my attention go over here and go like, I like that. I'm focusing on, and it is such, it is a, you know, most, most men will think it's no big deal. It's just a like, I'm not sleeping with her. I'm not talking with her. I'm not, I'm not betraying any, I'm not doing anything. It's just a picture, just a like. I look at pictures all day long, whether I like it or not is irrelevant. Well, not to her. It's not at all irrelevant. The fact that you are also putting it on public display that, um, that cut out, am I coming through? Am yeah, I still I, good? Okay. The fact the fact that you're putting it also on public display, that you're publicly liking. That's, that's, that's other, a good point, Brian. It, it's like, like mm -hmm. it's, it is a betrayal of sorts. Maybe not for, for, for the man, but it certainly is. It sounds like, especially for this woman. So that, that's, that's what I would say to that. What is, yeah. I think. What is the, what are, what are the, what is the fallout from the behavior? How is it affecting your relationship? That's what it is. Exactly. It's yeah. the same with like pornography. Some couples are able to hold pornography use in a way that's not threatening to the relationship. Many aren't. And if only one person is threatened by a behavior, that has to matter to their partner. If it doesn't matter, that couple's gonna have problems. Right. <clears throat> what steps can I take to navigate conflicts in my relationship without resorting to harmful expressions of anger or aggression? Mm -hmm. So in my work, uh, around navigating conflict um I, I i call it end unnecessary arguments because some arguments are necessary some disagreements so they we have to we have to sometimes fight things out but we can do so skillfully mm -hmm. but i i teach this four uh, steps to what i call master repair master repair if couples are being honest with each other disagreements conflict they are inevitable in my experience, it's the couples that are not being honest with each other, are not telling, not, not, not offering feedback, not, not revealing what's really going on with them consistently. That tends to be the couples that don't have conflict, but, but I call that a Cold War conflict. It's like nothing's happening <laughs> for a long time, yeah. time, but there will, will be a reconciliation someday. And, and also, you know, in, in the Cold War, there's no real love being made mm. there. So... Conflict is inevitable. And one of the things that I teach, uh, I teach this four steps to master repair. It's the four S's. I guess it's a little Band-Aid. It's funny. Every time I put that <laughs> on the screen, you're like, uh, the four S's to master repair. And the first one is, is uh, C. C. 
what I mean by see is we have to see the behavior that we're doing that's not helpful. So, you know, uh, Robin, you and I did a podcast earlier where we recorded this. I, t- I think I talked about this on the podcast. Like when I get into conflict, I'll cross my arms and turn my body, right? I'm, de- I'm defending myself. I can see it in my body. I, I never saw that until I saw it. Right. But now I, I see it. My face gets tight. There's like there's a physiology that takes over when I'm in 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 when I'm when a, when a disagreement arises that that uh, I'm not comfortable with. Right. So, so seeing it first, you know, for some, it might sound like a tone of voice that starts to emerge. Oh, my God, I'm doing that tone of voice again or I'm starting to get critical. I'm starting to come over into their lane and and. Uh, what was her what was exactly her question when she, when she does what what does she want not to do without resorting to harmful expressions of anger or aggression uh, okay so so she's recognizing so, she, she is recognizing that they're resorting to harmful expressions yes. of anger or aggression so what i would encourage them to explore for is well what are the telltale signs that that's where you're headed mm. What do you notice in your body, in your tone of voice, in your thoughts? Like, let's first learn to see the pattern. Yeah. It's just a pattern. It's a pattern that they're stuck in, and they've probably been stuck in for a long time. They probably watched a parent live that pattern out, or they're they're reacting to some something from childhood. It's like it's it's just a pattern. It's not a character flaw. It's just a pattern. The first thing to break a pattern is to see it. So that again might look like like as i told you for me it's crossing my arms and turning my body away from my partner that's the first clue to me that uh uh-oh if we keep going this is gonna only get worse yeah okay so see that's step one step two is stop just stop stop the pattern stop it just stop it you know that could look like if i notice I'm, i'm starting to raise my voice okay stop i'm gonna just stop raising my voice in this moment just stop I'm going to stop. Also, stop the. I have to stop the conversation. Stop the. We have to interrupt the momentum that, in the nor in the typical pattern, is going to take us into the place that we don't want to go. You know, the Gottman Institute. They have this. One of my favorite all-time statistics is ninety-six percent. The Gottman Institute, through their research with couples, found that they can predict Robin with ninety-six percent accuracy how a conversation will go, if it will go positive or negative, just by watching what happens in the first three minutes. Mm. Wow. Three minutes is all it takes to know whether a conversation is going to go well or go bad. That's a revelation because what that tells you is that if we're arguing about something for a half hour, an hour, hours in many cases, stop. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. In fact, stop, if you're doing stop, it for five Karen, minutes, stop, stop. I like that. See, stop. See, stop. Like if even five, 10 minutes, you can see very quickly. When, when I do this exercise uh, with couples, I'll, I'll put them in a conversation and I'll have them score themselves from one to 10. How safe do I feel right now? Mm-hmm. Right. Usually when they start, they're, they're at a number seven or eight. Like, you know, I feel pretty safe. We're cool. Everything's cool. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. Seven or eight. And then I'll say, okay, so talk about. I want you to start talking about a conversation, about a, an argument, a conflict uh, that you've had. Not, not, a, not a, you know, nuclear war level conflict, just, <laughs> just some, you know, <laughs> arguing over the, the dishes or something. Yeah. Something middling, middling. And what will happen without fail, one partner will just, okay, start. They'll say a sentence and I'll stop them. And then I'll ask them to, to judge. Now, rate yourselves again. Scale the one to ten. How safe do you feel? Robin, the conversation hasn't even begun and their numbers plummet. Wow. They're down at one. You know, the, the partner who's listening is like one. I'm at a one right now. I'm at a two. <laughs> I'm not feeling safe. And they haven't even said anything yet. They're reacting to the tone of voice, to their old, like, oh, I just know this isn't going to go well. And likewise, the person who's speaking is also like, oh, oh God, God, this isn't going to go well. Like, so it's like, a, it, it, you know, the Gottman say three minutes. What I see is 10 seconds. Wow. You can, it happens so quick. Mm-hmm. That's why seeing it is the first step. Stopping it is the second. The third is, I think, 
it's not the most important, but it's the one that, that none of us are really skilled in. And yet it's the one that, that can make all the difference. Uh, we often don't even have to get to step four if we can master step three. And that is soothe. Mm. Soothe. Mm. What might, might that look like? Well, there's soothing myself. There's also soothing my partner in that moment. But like, like just take, for example, my arms are crossed, my body's turned, I'm tense, I'm closed, I'm in a defensive stance. There's only fight in me right now. This is my fight or flight stance. Okay, once I see it, oh, now I'm going to stop it. I'm going to put my arms down. I'm going to turn and face. Ooh, I'm going to take a big breath. Like I'm actively soothing my own nervous system in that moment. I'm relaxed. I'll relax my shoulders. I'll even something because my face gets really tight when I get conflict. <laughs> yeah. Which do doesn't communicate safety to my partner. It communicates threat. So, you know, sometimes I'll even just sort of, you know, <laughs> rubberize <laughs> my face to soften your... my face. <laughs> now I'm, I'm, um, so I'm, I'm soothing myself in that moment, right? I'm breathing, I'm, t I'm intentionally taking in deeper breaths, relaxing my body. Now, sometimes soothing also means, you know what? I need 20 minutes. I got to go for a walk because I'm going to explode otherwise. Yeah, right. you know that I'm, you need, like that right there is take, taking the effort to soothe your nervous system because you know that that's what you need in order, exactly. you both need. Right. Well, I, I may not know what she needs, but I definitely know what ain't working. And me being in the room in this state is not going to help. So I'm going to take a walk. Now I can do that skillfully. And I say, even if through gritted teeth, I love you. I'm really frustrated right now. Um, I need to just take, I need, I need a pause. Yeah. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'll go, go breathe, go for a walk, clear my head. Oof, oftentimes that allows me to see a situation differently, to understand. Also, it gives me access to what, what, what would soothe my partner. I, I teach so many different skills about soothing your partner. One of the most simple ones is just what I call language needles. It's just these little sentences that I can say that won't resolve whatever conflict we think we're having or whatever argument we're, we're caught in. But it, what it will do is it's, it's words like, your feelings matter to me. I want, I want you to know I, I hear you. I may not understand what's going on, but I'm with you. I love you. I care about us. Notice these are just little sentences. I'm no longer arguing at what I call the level of the complaint. You know, it's, I'm not talking about the, uh, I'm not trying to argue you out of being upset that I liked a girl's photo on Instagram. I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm getting beneath that and saying, look, I love you. I care about you. Your feelings matter to me. We'll, we'll, I promise you, we're going to figure this out together. Oh, that's so, that's just awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's step three, soothing. So I'm soothing my partner and that's you know couples have to find what language works for them not the same thing won't what doesn't mm -hmm. work for everybody and and what i would say to my wife if she says to me may not necessarily be soothing for me mm -hmm. right so um and oftentimes that's all that's needed actually because what was the now fourth you're, thing? well the fourth is is what i call solve or or resolve mm -hmm. and the reason i say that often you don't even need to get to step four because what's really wanted and excuse me, in many relationship conflicts is connection. It's, right. they're at, they're it's not about not finding, even... right? There, there, wasn't it something, the stats are like 75% of the conflicts you're having in your partnership are unresolvable. That's so right. and unresolvable. You, like, there's no, right? So that's why you're saying that one, two, and three very possibly could work. Oftentimes, Often. that's all it takes. I really, not, yeah. not, that, not that there aren't real problems that relationships yes. have to solve. Of course there are. Right. But, but, I, I always want couples to remember this. No good solutions come from a state of disconnection. Yeah. And what m most couples are doing in that four steps, that four S steps to master repair, see, uh, stop, soothe, solve, or resolve. Mm -hmm. Most couples are trying to go from step one to step four. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's cool. I've never done that before. <laughs> yeah. Step one. I don't know what that means. See to solve. It's not a demonic sign, I promise. Any people that read it, don't read into it. <laughs> um, uh, weird world we live in. Uh, but step one, most couples are, they, they see there's a problem. There's the, uh, let's solve it. They go right to four. 
right? From step mm -hmm. one to step four. Let's mm -hmm. just solve it. Let's solve it. What's the solution? What's the solution? Yeah. You need to do this. Well, you should do this. Well, you didn't do that. You know, it's the, I call it the, the C solve <laughs> cycle of insanity. Mm -hmm. C solve, C solve, C solve. That's why I stop. Just stop. You have to break the pattern. Stop first and then soothe. What do you need to soothe yourself, to soothe your partner? Like we're not even talking about solutions yet. And as I said, we may not even need to get to solutions if we can, we're just wanting to come back into connection most of the time. And when we get there by connection, it's like, I feel safe again. I, I trust you again, and, yeah. and, which is so moment to moment. So wow. anyway. Wow. Brian Reeves, thank you so much for your this time. And this was this conversation was full. I hope everybody that's linked, like you gained some new skills. That's what this is all about, right? I mean, we're all, I believe doing this in, in our community is is to be better at relationships and to and we can with with these these are not complicated they're not easy sometimes but yeah. um, we can all make these we can all do this so yes. thank you Brian Reeves My I'm going to hold up your book again I hope everybody reads your fantastic book it's for men and for women every day or leave her it's it's excellent so thank you for joining us Brian and thank you everybody that came on the live today My pleasure Robin thank you take care bye.